All right. <coughs> uh, welcome to my talk. So uh, my name is Michael Yuan, and I'm the maintainer of uh, Wasm Edge project, which is a CNCF sandbox project. And uh, um, if you want my contact information, it's up there on the barcode. So the talk is efficient and cross-platform AI inference with Wasm Edge. So you know, the question I have to answer first is compared with who? You know, how, uh, you know, you know, that's why you call yourself efficient and cross-platform. So the word efficient is compared with perhaps the most common way to do AI inference today is to use Python or PyTorch. Um, what I'm going to show you is that we are orders of magnitude more efficient than Python. So, you know, that's, Python is great for training, but you should never use it for inference unless you just want a research or, or a hobby project. So that's the first word. And cross-platform is um, in large operations, you know, uh, people often use C++ to develop inference applications. And uh, uh, the problem with C++, C or C++ native applications is not cross-platform. So it's difficult to use them um, in, say, a Kubernetes environment or a cloud native environment. So efficient compared with Python and cross-platform compared with C++, uh, C++, uh, C++ based frameworks. So that's a big claim to make. So um, I'll start my talk with, uh, with a demo. You know, um, you guys can also follow along. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, um, by the end of the demo, you know, I think it takes five, 10 minutes. You know, it's, uh, you're gonna have a large language model running on your own laptop. You know, that's how we run a large language model in, our, uh, in my laptop, uh, on everyone, every of my, our, our team members' laptop, and also run our office server. You know, so we have a, a Jetson Orient device. It's about this big. It has a media D GPU in it. It costs about $2,000. $2, and we run a large language model here as a coding assistant so everyone can use it, right, in, uh, in our office. So just the one line of code. And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this demo first. Okay. So copy and paste this. And, yeah, and put that into the command line. So it asks a bunch of questions. The first, of course, you know, because we are using this, we are using the WASMH runtime, it's a WebAssembly runtime to to run the large language model is the first, it asks you to install WASMH. But since I already have my WASMH installed, so this is about uh, a 20 megabytes download, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, to install WASMH. So I say I already have it installed. Then it gives you a list of um, uh, large language models that you can choose from. You know, if you search uh, Hugging Face, search for Llama 2 based large language model, you can see o um, over 2,000 of them. You know, so they are all based on the Llama 2 model that Facebook released, you know, it's called Meta AI now. But, you know, uh, people use different data sets to fine tune it, or use different, um, you know, um, pre-trained data using the same architecture. So, um, what we've listed here is like, um, you know, 20 something that's, that's, that's most popular and has tested with our, our um, you know, uh, our setup. So you can see some of them are good at Q&A, some of them are good at coding, you know, and uh, so, we're gonna do the simple thing. We're gonna choose the first one, which is the original Llama 2 seven billion parameter model. So one, and uh, then you have two choices. You can run, so we're gonna show you both. So you can run it as a command line op, uh, application or you can run it as a web server. So let's do for one first. Do I need log? Um, no, I don't. So what, at this stage, what it does is that downloads uh, the inference program. So the inference program is uh, a Rust program that we wrote and we compiled into Wasm. And uh, so it, um, the inference program, the entire size of the inference program is two megabytes, okay? So why do we say we are uh, efficient compared with Python? Because the Python with all the dependencies, the, 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 the PyTorch Docker image, for instance, is four gigabytes. So it's four gigabytes versus two megabytes. And people say, okay, that's not a fair comparison because, you know, what about the dependencies you have in this WASM file? The only dependency it has is the WASM runtime you just installed. Is that the 20, uh, 20 megabytes binary? So the way you can think about it is, uh, is like a Java application. So the only thing it depends on is the JVM, right? You know, as, as soon as you install the JVM, you can run any Java application. So um, the WASM application here is the same as well. So it's a two megabytes application that we wrote in Rust and then compiled into WASM. I can show you the source code in a minute. And uh, it's, uh, um, so it, it, does, uh, it performs the works that's the four gigabytes PyTorch application, uh, the, the, the four gigabytes PyTorch 
um, application kind of complex, right? And the other thing that uh, I want you to notice is that there's, um, it's just llama chat that wasn't. There's no Mac version of this, Windows version of this, ARM version of this, Intel version of this, or NVIDIA GPU version of this. It's all the same. It's one application that cross platform. It's not only across different operating systems, but also across different CPUs, GPUs. So on whatever device, it knows through the underlying Watson runtime, it knows how to detect the, the application runtime, the, 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 um, you know, the, the hardware that's available on this device, and we'll be able to use that, right? So let me ask the first question. The first question, um, where is the capital of Japan? So the first question takes some time because um, for the first question, it needs to load the, the, uh, the entire large language model into memory and then uh, run through the inference. So the, the, it already answered, but the, the, the large language model is like, um, I think five gigabytes here, you know, so it needs to load that from disk. By the way, everything um, I have here, you know, the, I have confidence to do this demo because I'm not relying on the network here. You know, everything is running on my, on my MacBook. My MacBook is two years old. When I bought this MacBook, I thought I had no use of the GPU, so I chose the lowest configuration that, that I can possibly find, you know. So now I'm using the GPU all the time, you know, by, you, you know, so, so this, um, the, the, the ability to, to return in that speed, you know, is that, it's because, you know, there's a, there's a GPU device that can be detected by the WASMH runtime, and the, uh, and the WASMH runtime would be able to load that, that, um, um, that model into the unified memory and then answer this question. So let me ask the follow question. Um, what about the United States? Okay, so it answers much faster now because the model has already been loaded. As you can see, the, uh, the inference it gave the answer faster than I can talk, right? You know, so the capital of the United States is Washington DC, District of Columbia. You know, so um, in, this simple in this simple conversation, you can, you can already see that the model follows conversation because if I just ask the model, what about the United States? There's no good answer. You know, what, what about the United States? You know, it's a country, right? Only with the context of the previous question, I'm asking the capital of the United States. So if I say, what's about the United States? It answers the capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. Okay, so let's ask another follow-up question. Please plan a two-day trip to that city. <laughs> well, it, it is faster than I can read it. So, so you know, it, it says some nonsense, but, it's, uh, but it gives you actually, you know, those places where you can go in, uh, you know, day one, day two, and I can have it plan a two-day trip in Tokyo for me or in Kyoto for me. You know, that's, uh, so it answers a lot of those questions. You know, yesterday, um, you know, I, I was messing around with that. I thought, so, so I said, um, you know, um, you know um, uh, the capital of Japan, is not Kyoto? And it says, no, it's not. It's the old capital of Japan. You know, it's no things like that, right? You know, so it's a, uh, but you can see, you know, that's uh, um, on this very low, low end um, uh, Macintosh that uh, uh, we were able to run those, um, you know, uh, AI core, uh, you know, those um, uh, large language inference um, at the speed that is, um, you know, faster than a human can talk, right? So let me switch gears and do another demo, which we run the same, uh, the same script again, but make different choices. So we still keep the, keep my own water mage runtime, and then we choose the first model. You know, the reason I always choose the first model is because it's already downloaded on my machine. So, you know, if, if I do need to download the, the model on, uh, you know, on the conference Wi-Fi, it, uh, you know, it would break the demo. You know, it would take a very long time because it's a, it's a, it's a five, six gigabytes, um, you know, um, um, uh, file download. So if I say I want to create an API server, this, and uh, it now download a different WASM application, this bottom application is about five gigabytes, and it's about five megabytes instead of two megabytes, it's five megabytes. What it does is that it starts an API server. So what does, 
What the, uh, so why do you need an API server for the model? It's because a lot of the tool chains in the, in, the, in the large language model ecosystem started by working with the OpenAI API, right? You know, so you use ChatGPT as a backend. The OpenAI um, uh, system has their own uh, API format. It has certain JSON format or certain um, you know, uh, HTTP conventions that they want you to use, right? So the Llama-API-Server is, uh, is another Rust program that we wrote that essentially start a server using Rust. You know, um, in this particular case, we use the Hyperquate. And, uh, um, and then from that server, we connect that to the large language model that we have just, um, that's, um, you know, we have specified. So, it's in, uh, so essentially, it is a, it's an application that start a web server in front of the large language model. But the web server con, um, you know, is, uh, um, um, takes an input and output message that are compliant with open AI format. So that allows uh, all the tool chains out there like the LAN chain or Llama index and you know, things like that that used to work with OpenAI to work with your own model. So you know, essentially, um, this is what we do. So we can do that on your, that, that allows the model to be served outside of your local computer, although it's running on your local computer, right? You know, that's how we do it with uh, our own development team. So, so we, have a, uh, we have a small media server, you know, that's a Jetson Orin that, that I talked about. That has 64 gigabytes of, uh, uh, of unified memory. We put that in our, uh, in our office. And so all the developers in the office ask programming questions about to that server. You know, so to, to have it, you, you know, essentially as a co-pilot, right? You know, except we don't have to pay for it. It uh, stays entirely private. We don't contribute any data to any outside of entities. And uh, it uh, can be trained with, uh, um, with the code and with the document documentations that are very specific to that team, right? So as you can see, it's a uh, it started a server. You know, I can interact with the server by using curl and JSON. But uh, you know, I'll show you something that's even simpler. So it start listening at that port. So I can load that port directly in the web browser. Hold on. So you can see here the URL. It's an unsecured URL because it is. Um, because it's listening on the local host, right? So the entire thing is running on local host. Although if you have, um, if it's on a, a local network, you can also access this server by its IP address. So what it does, it's not only it has a, a API server that's built in that can, that can respond to JSON queries. It can also provide a nice chat UI, um, you know, um, uh, user interface where you can interact with it in your local browser. So let, let ask a question that is, uh, that is more complex. So I'm, I don't have strong confidence it's gonna answer correctly, but we'll see. So it's write a function that determines if an input integer is prime. Wrap your code in um, blocks. Okay, so that it tries to format the code better. So, you know, that's a very typical, um, you know, uh, developer question. It's, it takes some time because it's the first, uh, um, it's the first question you're gonna ask. It, it's gonna, oh, it's come back pretty, pretty fast. So, let me read that. Sure, the function that determines if an input integer is prime is this. Okay, so it's formatted in a, in a JSON format. If you, uh, if you look at the code, it's, it's Python, okay? You know, that's because uh, all those models are well learned in Python. You know, I can, I can ask a question later, you, you know, to see if it can do Rust. So, what it, you know, the most important thing is the otherwise line, the, the line behind the otherwise, right? You know, so it start from number two, goes all the way to the square root of n, n to the 0.5, right? And then, um, you know, uh, test those numbers one by one to see if that can be evenly divided by the, um, you know, by the input number. So, you know, so if it is, um, if none of them can be evenly divided, it becomes, um, it is a prime number and if it's not, then it's not. So, you know, so it, it also has explanation right there. So, you know, that's, you know, this is a, um, a 7B Llama 2 model running on my, again, on my very low end Mac lap, laptop, that I don't even have external power source connect to it, so it doesn't really do the, uh, you know, even the, the, the high power consumption mode, right, you know. However, 
let me try to see. Um, can you write it? Write it in Rust. I don't really like Python, you know, because you know the, the whole point of this talk is not to use Python, right? You know, so I want to write it in, in Rust. Oh, see, it does. You know, so the same algorithm and the, even the same comments, and it goes up to. It's the same note, right? You know, that's uh, yeah. It's it uses Rust to to convert to you know, um, to the um, floating numbers and you know things like that. I can do even more or go one more step because that's one of the things when we use the. Um, this model to do code reviews in our, um, uh, in our own code. So we have a GitHub bot set up to, um, to, to channel all our GitHub PRs into this model and uh, ask it to, um, you know, not the 7B model, it's a larger model, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a code llama model, right? You know, to ask it to review all the, uh, all the community submitted PR requests into our repository. So um, in, in one of the PRs, uh, the developer wrote something very, very much like this. You know, it's a, um, it's a, it's outside developer, and uh, um, I look at it. I thought, you know, it looks fine. You know, I think most of you guys would think determining a prime number like this is fine, right? But this model returns one single comment to say you don't need to check even numbers over and over again. Okay, that blows my mind. I mean, how would it know that? But so I can ask it to, to see if it can respond to that. I would just, uh, you do not need to check even numbers over and over again. See, you know, I don't have high confidence it's gonna, because this really is a smaller, uh, smaller model. So, it may give a correct answer, it may not, but you know, we'll see. <sighs> Did it? Oh, um, I don't think this is correct, is it? I mean, it's still doing the same thing. It didn't really go up by two, right? Well, so, you know, that's a, uh, there you have it, but you know, for a larger model, it would uh, it would be able to deal with problems like that very easily. So you know, so well, we have seen this model detects infinite loop in our in our code. You know, um, um, and also mi minor things like documentation. When we when we change the certain things and refer to documents that didn't exist, it would know that, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's uh, um, it would complain about that, right? You know, so 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 he, so that's the demo that's uh, um, that I want to show you. Um, let me see. So let me go back to my side. Okay. Okay. So, you know, you can do this today on your own computer. You know, even if you, uh, you, you know, um, Linux laptop, you know, Mac, uh, Windows, you know, Mac, you know, whatever. You know, that's uh, um, it's it's a simple command line, and it's gonna, um, you know. Install all the software for you, and it's, um, and all those software are very lightweight and uh, um, no Python required. You know, there's no complex Python packages that you have to manage. That's you know hundreds of packages and gigabytes of dependencies and all that stuff. It's very simple and very um, and very easy, and uh, it works. It's a single binary file. It's think about it as Java. You know, the Java Java bytecode file can work on anywhere where there's a JVM, right? You know, so uh, the Wasm bytecode file, as we compile, can work anywhere where there is a uh, um, there's a there's a Wasm runtime like Wasm Edge, right? So those are the demos, those are the screens that are just um, you know um, just in case the demo didn't work. Right? <laughs> so let's go through that um, you know um, quickly. So it's really just a step one: install Wasm Edge with uh, with what we call the GGML plugin. The GGML plugin is uh, is a uh, is a community plugin based on Llama.cpp. Um, so the the great thing about Wasm is that it provides a unified interface. So, you know, from the developer point of view, you just write to the WebAssembly standard to do AI inference. And uh, whether the WebAssembly behind, uh, when WebAssembly execute your, your program, it could choose any of the inference framework underneath it. So, you know, so if there's no GGML, it could 
choose PyTorch. If there's no Py, if uh, you know, um, I've just seen uh, Intel has a, has a new um, library that come out that take fully advantage of their new CPUs. You know, so uh, the, the, the new generation of Intel CPUs has a lot of co-processors built in, and they have you know, drivers for that. So if you don't have, um, if you are not on a Mac, you don't have Lama.cpp, you could choose that library to run on your Intel, Intel hardware and you know, things like that. So, it's, uh, so install Wasmage and uh, download your favorite model. You know, like I said, on, on Hugging Face, a you know, uh, model of the GGUF format, you can find thousands of that. You know, that's, uh, um, it's just a casual search. You know, that's, those models come out practically every single day. You know, they are, they are all the same architecture, but trained with different data, has different, some are good at coding, some are good at uh, Q&A, some are good at role playing, some are good at math, some are good at medical knowledge, you know, all kind of stuff. So, you know, so just, uh, um, that opens the whole world for you in terms of, you know, large language models, right? You know, so download your favorite models. And then um, chat with uh, chat with the CLI. Really, just uh, uh, you know, first download the the the, the compiled Wasm application. Again, this is cross-platform, so you just download the Wasm file. There's no uh, um, there's no different Wasm file for your for your uh, for your particular platform. And then use Wasmage to run it. You know, that's uh, that'll be the CLI demo. And then the um, uh, web UI demo is a little more complicated because we have to download the HTML and the JavaScript that you see. That's when you go to the website, right? You know, so um, we have to download. Um, this is another open source project called Chat, uh, Chatbot UI. You know, so you download those HTML files and then you put that into the same directory as your uh, API server. And uh, when you start the API server, it's uh, it responds to those JSON requests, but also serves the HTTP and uh, and 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 uh, um, JavaScript assets, right? So from that point on, it becomes fairly easy. You know, that's. Uh, so um, because we have an API server now, the API server responds to open AI like API request. So you just point your tooling from open AI's endpoints to your new endpoints that's on your local computer or on your um, on some computer on your uh, in your own network, right? Then you will be able to use say REG applications like uh, Longchain.com and you know um, uh, LamaIndex.ai, you know things like that. People have built a ton of applications that uh, um, can read. You know, chat with your PDF, chat with your GitHub repository. You know, and uh, basically chat with any documents that you have on, uh, that's that, that's out there online, right? And then use um, uh, tools like Flowstar Network. You can connect that to um, you know um, to to external systems. For instance, the, the the chat API doesn't have to be a web API. It can be a Discord bot. You know, there's one thing that's um, uh, we've been demonstrated yesterday. You know, that's um, she built um, you know community assistant bot by you know uh, by uh, feeding um, um, uh, project documentations and project descriptions into a, a, a vector database and then have people interact with that through um, through GitHub or through Slack, right? You know, so so there's um, there's just um, because this is a fast evolving field, so there are just so many uh, so many opportunities. So those are the large language models. Um, however. You know, the, the, the title of talk is not to say how to run large language model with Wasmage, it's to run how to run AI inference with Wasmage. So AI is more than just LLMs. So let's look at an, another example. So in, in Wasmage, the way it works that we have those um, uh, native-based inference, uh, high performance inference framework that plugged into Wasmage. So um, as um, application developers, you just need to learn the WebAssembly API and uh, uh, write your code in Rust, in Go, or in JavaScript, compile that into WebAssembly, and then you'll be able to access the underlying uh, infrastructure, right? You know, so there's, um, here are some of those um, um, uh, AI-related frameworks that are plugging into the, Was uh, the, the, the Wasmage runtime, right? You know, so at the top, those are, um, um, you know, what I call um, um, AI runtimes, like PyTorch, you know, PyTorch, Sounds like Python, but you know you can use PyTorch without Python. PyTorch has a core C library which you can use. You know, and TensorFlow is the same idea, and then OpenWino is uh, is Intel's project, and then GGML is something we have just demonstrated. However, if, uh, when you just have those AI models, it's enough because you are, the the data you are, you get you feed into the AI typically come from say a camera or uh, a video stream, you know, things like that. So you need to use OpenCV and FFmpeg and, you know, libraries like that to do pre-processing. And the pre-processing can also be done on GPUs, right? And uh, um, at the bottom line, those are the large families of 
models that uh, that can be supported by you know um, um, the technology at the top. And, you know, so what we have shown are the uh, the meta series of Llama two models, and the media pipe is a very popular set of models that Google Cloud has. You know, to do uh, media processing like image recognition and you know things like that. And the Yolo five is also a very popular um, you know um, um, uh, a computer vision model. So I wouldn't show you a real demo, but there's uh, but here's the project. It's uh, it's, um, it's one of our um, uh, student interns through the LFX internship program. You know, so we had, um, um, we had about seven or 10 student interns every year from all over the world that's, uh, that is paid by the Linux Foundation to work on projects like ours, right? You know, so one of the, um, one of the student, um, I think he's a graduate student in the US now. So um, uh, we asked him to, uh, to, to build uh, the WASM interface for the media pipe libraries. So, media, uh, so this is um, basically his, uh, his work tracking issue. So those are the media pipe libraries. They have, you know, say object detection, image classification, you know, um, 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 uh, hand, hand landmark detection, you know, hand gesture detection, you know, things like that. And this is a GitHub repository that's uh, um, for this project. So I want to show you a, a very simple example that's, um, that is uh, because I keep talking about you know, developer write code to the WASM interface, and then um, compile that to WASM, and then have have the WASM application run cross-platform across all, the, uh, um, you know, all the devices. So, what do I mean by developers write application to the WASM API? So here, you know, is uh, um, I I keep saying this. You know, um, in this day and age, you know, we are talking about applications that only less than 10 megabytes, and we are talking about code that can fit into one PPT. You know, that's, uh, that's really all there is to this uh, image detection application. So um, you know, the, the large language model is a similar setup. So essentially, you have a, um, the, the, the code itself is, is, um, is written in Rust, right? You know, so the first is that you, you load the image from the disk. Um, then you load the, the model from the disk from the past, and then you have the uh, object detection builder, which is uh, um, what we call the, the Rust API, right? You know, so it's, uh, it wraps around the work that you need, uh, developer need to do to, um, to instantiate the model and load the model into the memory. And then, you know, all you need to do is to call detect on this, um, you know, once you build an object, you call detect and put it in the image. It's gonna return a tensor. The, the, the tensor is a detection result, and then you have some um, post-processing work, you know, after the print line, those are the uh, post-processing work where you can draw a box around the, you know, that's, um, that work is done by OpenCV, you know, to draw a box around the, uh, the detected object and show the, show the um, you know, uh, probabilities and, you know, things like that. So the whole thing is just, uh, I think this is uh, less than 20 lines of code. And, um, you know, the, the um, uh, large language model is the same, you know, so you uh, have a builder to build the, to build the model. And then you say, you know, uh, instead of detect, you have predict, right? You know, so you, uh, and the parameter it takes is a string. It's a, it's, a, it's a prompt that you give it, you, you give the model. So, um, and the return result is a, is a array where you can, uh, you can encode it back into natural language, right? So if you run this, it would show this. So um, you, um, you know, it will print out um, the, the detection result in, 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 a, in, in, a, in, in formatted text. So it would tell you, you know, there's a, um, I think it specifically was referring to this image. Okay, so, you know, that's, uh, um, I used it in, in KubeCon Chicago because this is a typical style, hot dog style in, in, in Chicago where they don't just have the, the, the bun and the sausage, they put a lot of stuff in it. So it really confused the model. Right. So the model thinks there's uh, there's uh, two hot dogs, um, you know, laid on top of each other, right? You know, but that's really the strength of you know um, why we need to use open source private models is because all those um, all those models, for instance, this model is um, what Google has in Google Cloud, you know, um, in, in their media pipe pipelines called uh, MobileNet, right? You know, so it's trained on a standard set of images. It doesn't have you know images of this complex, food images of this complex. You know, so um, it probably doesn't recognize a lot of Japanese food either. You know, so, you know, so in order to, uh, for your own application, uh, for your own, um, you know, specific use case, 
like the large language model, you wanted to do programming or you want to do role playing, right? You know, those are entirely different uh, use cases. So um, for, for vision models, it's also important that uh, if you could, uh, um, you know, um, uh, retrain or fine tune the model so that the model that's, uh, that can fit your, your, your specific application, right? So with all that, you know, that's, uh, um, so I, I've, I've shown all my demos, you know, and, uh, and the code and all that stuff, you know, so the question people really ask is, uh, um, so what, you know, so, you know, there's so much, you know, you talk about the ways, new way to run inference. Okay, I've seen that before, you know, the Python does that, you know, that's, a, so the real answer is, you know, again, like I said in the beginning, you know, the, the real strength here is no Python, you know, that's, a, so let's um, dive a little bit into the rationale behind all this. So uh, today, if you want to do anything AI related, you have to use Python. You know, O'Reilly Data Survey says that, you know, Python is the most, um, you know, popular programming language out there. However, it's not without it's the detractors. I think this, um, you know, um, um, Christoph Leitner, you know, some of them, uh, some of you guys may know him, you know, that's, uh, um, he's, uh, um, you know, uh, the father of LVM and Clang, you know, that's the most popular used compilers. And he also invented the Swift programming language, which is the most popular programming language on uh, iOS, right? You know, so um, he recently uh, started a company called Modular and they had a, they actually had a uh, big announcement yesterday in the Bay Area, so they had a conference. Um, so they have a framework called, called Modular. Uh, why, uh, when we, uh, we ask why he invented another language to do AI, it's because it's 35,000 fast, 30 times thousand faster than Python, it's six orders of magnitude faster than Python. This is how slow Python is, you know. So if you have a, if you have a, a native application, a native framework, you compare that with Python, there's a, there's a six orders of magnitude difference, right? You know, so um, when I first did this, um, um, you know, um, um, presentation, sometimes I have this, have this screenshot and uh, a lot of people don't know who he is, but, I think now you all know who he is, right? You know, because of all the debacle at OpenAI, you know, him and Sam Altman, <laughs> and you know, that's a, so um, I, I think that is a well, um, you know, um, this um, a very interesting quote from, from Greg, uh, Greg Brockman, you know, that's uh, um, much of modern machine learning engineering is making Python not to be a bottleneck, it's to figure out where Python is slow and avoid Python in those places, right? You know, so that takes a large number of engineering work. That's, um, so the root cause of that really is that um, we have gone through um, uh, decades of, um, you know, um, uh, progress in computer science with the presence of Moore's law, where the, um, you know, where the, um, the computing power getting, the hardware computing power getting ever increasingly more capable. So the software efficiency becomes less important. Um, so this paper was written in 2020, and uh, um, the, the authors are all well-known computer scientists in Stanford and in Google. So um, the title is also very, uh, um, very interestingly worded to say there's a plenty of room at the top, you know, because 40 years ago, there was a very famous paper that published with the title, there's plenty of room at the bottom. And uh, the author of that paper is Laura, right? So that paper was slow, is to say the semiconductor gonna improve so fast the software efficiency is not that important. So, you know, the software should be focused on developer products. So in all those years, uh, through Java, through, uh, Node, uh, through JavaScript, through, Py uh, through uh, Ruby, and then through, it's all about making life easier for developers, but making life harder for the hardware, right? You know, because, you know, that, as you can see, you know, that's uh, the, the, the efficiency of those hardware, um, you know, the different languages on, on, on hardware is staggering. You know, that's, uh, so, you know, um, um, so the, the key point of this of this paper published in 2020 is that that era is behind us. You know, there's uh, there's no more Moore's law on the on the hardware side anymore. So you know, um, so in order to squeeze performance out of si uh, the 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 future direction of the of the whole industry or the future direction of the um, you know to squeeze more performance to continue Moore's law in in the world of AI is to have more efficient software frameworks which is exactly what we are trying to do, you know, is to, um, is to, uh, is to move people away from Python and uh, not all the way to the native C++ because that's 40 years ago, that's very hard. You know, people gave up that for very good reasons. And uh, but to, um, to a portability and abstract layer that's sitting in between, right? You know, that's um, where um, that, you know, we call that WebAssembly, you know, but that's where we are, we are trying to go, right? So, you know, that's, um, um, a very interesting talk from, 
Um, you know, so uh, Chris Aubin is uh, is uh, um, is the CTO of Wikipedia. Okay, and uh, he said, "What is the right way to install Python on a new M2 M uh, MacBook?" You know, I dare not. Oh, okay, I dare not install Python on my Mac laptop, laptop because I know that after two months, three months, it's gonna get messed up. It's gonna uh, reach a point where pip cannot install any package because if you install anything, it's gonna conflict with something else on your computer, right? You know, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really hard problem, you know, the, the, the Python ecosystem gets so complex. And uh, so, you know, so, but all Python does in terms of inference is to set on top of the C++ inference framework, you know, so Python is just a C framework. For C framework to be four gigabytes big, and uh, you can't run it on the edge, you can't run it on the, the, a factory device, you can't run it in the car, you know, so it's a, uh, it's a gigantic waste of resources and, uh, and uh, y you know, um, provide a lot of limitations in terms of the things that you can do, right? So we think the future of AGI or, or the future of machine learning is not going to be Python. And, uh, you know, so the guy said, you know, AGI would be building Python, let that sink in. And uh, so I didn't say that, you know, uh, Elon Musk said that, you know, he thinks the future is Rust, right? You know, that's, uh, that's um, um, pretty much exactly what we are trying to do here as well, you know, so the rationale really is that, you know, because of the more slow is moving to the software, so we can't have all those heavyweight software packages anymore. Right? So um, I'll end the talk because I think I only have three minutes left, you know, so with, uh, with a comparison chart, you know, why we do that, right, you know, so, on the left side is to compare with Python, and uh, the, the, the single most important benefit of using Wasm, as you can see from my demo, is the simplicity. You know, there's a single container binary application, and there's no supply chain security issues, there's no, you know, hundreds of packages that potentially conflict with each other, and uh, it's, it's as easy as just to copy across a file, you know, and uh, it's ready for cloud deployment because it's managed by Kubernetes, Without the container, because most of the um, you know a Docker desktop, uh, OpenShift, and uh, Container D all integrated with Wasm today. So you know, so you don't really need a Linux container to do that. You can just have those um, you know um, uh, Kubernetes um, or container management tools to start WebAssembly directly, and it's three orders of magnitude smaller, and it could be uh, you know f uh, four or five magnitudes faster than say uh, compared with Python, and uh, compared with C++, you know it's a uh, it's um, it, it's comparison to do another direction. So on the left side is efficient. The other side is, is, uh, is, is portable. So C, C++, you have all this, um, you know, um, portability issues. I mean, even if you have a C, C++ application that are compiled and put into a Linux container, you just to solve the problem of portability across operating systems. Because for x86, for ARM, for RISC-V, you need different container images. And if you have, want to use NVIDIA GPU, you need different container runtimes. So you need to install your, um, your entire, say, uh, the Docker setup, uh, you know, accordingly. And then have different container images to be orchestrated across your network, right? You know, so, but, but in our case, it's, um, there's none of that. You know, it's just a single binary. I run it on my Mac, I run it on my office, you know, the, 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 the Jetson device. I run it on a Windows laptop with the, you know, NVIDIA uh, 4090, you know, that's, uh, you know, they all just runs at the at the top speed, right? You know, so yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's it. You know, that's. Um, thank you, uh, thank you very much. And we have one minute left. <laughs> yeah, if there are any questions. Yeah. No question. Then go. <laughs> Go try this one, you know. You, you're gonna have this before the end of today, you know. That's one command on your Mac or on your, on your Windows, yeah. All right, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. Can uh, I ask a question? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 are you planning to uh, replace entire Python environment by Rust plus uh, WSM? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, tra uh, you include training process? So this, this is very strictly about inference. So I do believe Python is needed for training because training, you need a lot of interactions, you know, that's uh, so the, a, a scripting environment and a lot of tools that Python has available is very important there. But inference is fundamentally a very simple process like, like I showed, you know, it's like only 20 lines of code, right? 
So to have Python to do the inference, you are wasting like 99% of the of the of the code that in PyTorch, you know, because you know it's not used, right? You know, so that's why you know. Ah, there, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Thanks. 